Jessica, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I can hear somebody. I can't see you. Oh, okay. Well, that's the problem. Uh, our pictures aren't showing up, and we have looked at everything possible on our computer, and it says something to the effect that host disabled video. Okay. Well, I see a lot of other I see a lot of other videos, so I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, but we're not projecting on the screen anyway, so it's okay if we can't see you. Um, okay. We're about to start here. We're just gonna. Uh, there's about 20 or five folks here, so we're just gonna quiet them down, and then we'll get the meeting started in a, about one minute. Here we are. We're going to be using both the microphone and we're doing Zoom so that you at home can be seeing what we're doing. And first of all, we're going to open with a moment of quiet, please. Thank you. Zoom, can you hear me when I'm using this microphone? Put thumbs up. Okay, I see some thumbs up. Thank you. Um, we have people here in Kendall Hall. It is wonderful to see more people. Yay! <laughs> and I hope that we can keep growing in having more people. I'm using this microphone because we are in Kendall Hall, and so we need to be using this today. So we are going to go through our meeting and I think we can do this all in one hour and I hope all of us get more informed. Karen Jackson came up to me this morning and said, Diane, I just want to let you know. I said, good, well, that's good to know. And I think that what we're going to learn during the meeting helps all of us learn a little bit more about what's going on. So first up is Jan. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see real people. So May 4th will actually be a year for me. And wow, to finally get to see people in Kendall Hall is just amazing. It's just, it makes my heart feel good. And for those of you who are out in Zoom land, it's great to, to see you too, but we would love to see you in person. So. Okay, um, COVID update. So we continue our weekly testing of staff on our campus, and we have to do that because our numbers continue to be above 5% uh, in Rockbridge County. So until we see two weeks in a row of green for us instead of yellow, we will be doing it once a week uh, as opposed to once a month. We've actually had no new cases, which is fantastic and we're doing our best to keep it that way. For stepping out, uh, we initiated step seven uh, on our campaign to open our campus. All aspects appear to be going well. Can I get a thumbs up? It's good to be more open and good, good, good. And it's nice to see the open view when you come on to Kendall Drive and there's no guard shack there, it's delightful. I know Herbie's happy about that too. Phase three update. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Honestly, uh, I'm not even gonna give you dates. I'm gonna say that Webster and Borden, the internal will be done sometime in May. They are making progress. I think we would make more progress if we'd actually see people working in those areas, uh, but we'll, we'll get there uh, when we get there. They are telling us the end of April. I'm telling you, May. Outside work, of course, is dependent on the weather. We're really pushing for final civil inspections to be completed in May as well, uh, which would be some of the um, DEQ stuff. 
the Webster covered walkway is due to be completed in early May as well. Little update on the IT assessment. We did have an IT uh, assessment done by Dave Baker, as you are well aware, and we continue our work on that IT stabilization project. So until we can get where we wanna be, we have to stabilize what we have and determine what it is we have. So that's the top priorities for this workforce. Again, we are implementing, implementing a network infrastructure remediation project, which is what we're working on now. Uh, we have created a timeline and that's for both our wired and our wireless networks. We're gonna optimize our existing phone system. We just want it to work. And that's what we're working on. Implementation of a high level IT steering committee. We have done that. We have uh, board representation as well as staff and residents. And that first meeting is May 10th. Little update on the landscape architect. We did send out the RFPs to four firms. We got two, pres or two uh, RFPs back or proposals back. We received one from Arthur Bartenstein's group, ABL, and three north out of Richmond. So the group will uh, review those proposals. We've already started to review them and we are meeting tomorrow to actually do the interviews and hear the presentations by those two uh, firms. So, uh, and it is a nice coincidence that tomorrow is actually Earth Day and we are interviewing our landscape architects. So how cool is that? Okay, last but not least, staffing. Uh, as you know, we are really struggling with staffing. Uh, for housekeeping, dining, and healthcare, we are not alone. I'm sure you have seen ads in the paper for Lexington businesses. Jessica is part of the downtown group and they have had uh, long conversations about the fact that there are no employees out there for anyone to choose from. Uh, and across the nation, we are struggling in our communities as well, just trying to find. Uh, Dave Baker is with Diacon Lutheran Social Ministries in Pennsylvania. And I asked him at the end of our IT call on Monday, Dave, are, are you all struggling? He said, unbelievably so. So dining, you know, all of those uh, folks in housekeeping were just really struggling. So we have a recruitment and retention group. We also have the workforce culture strategic planning group, and we are looking at wages, benefits, uh, things that we can add, extra benefits that we can possibly add to attract folks. We're working on a listing of top benefits of working at Kendall at Lexington. And we're also looking at a sustainable package something that we can offer into the future and can afford to offer into the future because we just can't throw money at the ideas for the short-term problem because it's a long-term problem as well. So for those two groups, it's not easy conversations. It's a lot of back and forth and thinking outside the box and what can we do differently and how can we keep the good people that we have. So just to let you all know, we are currently recruiting for four housekeepers nine dining staff, as well as positions in the healthcare. Uh, we do apologize to all of you, um, but please know that we are actively recruiting for these positions, uh, but times are definitely interesting and, and quite challenging for us. So, uh, and it's not always about the money. It's really about satisfaction and we look at that as well. I have a CEO round table that I have monthly that I invite uh, line staff to come to and just talk and tell us what's good about Kendall at Lexington. Tell us what you're struggling with. Tell us how we can help you. Uh, and, and we're asking them to help us as well. So it takes a team to run a community like this. And I also ask the residents, any suggestions that you can give to us? Uh, it's helpful. You all have had careers and um, I'm sure you've had struggles from time to time finding good help. So we are open to suggestions. We are open to thinking outside the box. Uh, and even Felicia is opening the little wallet a little, a little wider for us. So uh, no, she uh, is really struggling as well to find what is the right choice. Any questions? I can't see Zoom land, so I don't know if there are any questions or not in Zoom land.
Does any, if anyone has any questions, um, either put your hand up or just unmute yourself because I don't see a ton. I see. Uh, Smith, yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. I have a question about the heating and cooling unit at the end of the carport in the south parking lot. Oh, boy, about a month ago, head. it got extremely loud and it has continued. I've sent uh, two messages to uh, Jennifer and, and received one back that they were going to look at it, or, and that, but nothing has happened and it keeps people besides myself awake at night wakes you up at night yeah. comes on about every 15 minutes extremely loud and i'd just like to know if there is something happening that it might go away what's going on okay so the question is about a loud unit that we have a heating and cooling unit and i will have to ask herbie and herbie is not in the room with us but i will uh, make sure that we get back to you you've, you've reached out to jennifer that's probably the best way to do that, but I will follow up with Herbie. Thank Herbie. you very much. Sure. Anyone sure. else? Uh, this is Beth Knapp. Okay. Hi, Beth. Um, Jan, and uh, I know that we're down one uh, person in maintenance since Justin left. Is that, are we we're trying to find somebody to replace him as well? Yes. Yeah, so the question was, we are down one from Justin leaving in maintenance. Yes, we are looking for that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You okay. Thanks. We, uh, I don't know why it's not going back to speaker view here or my recording. Um, I'll keep talking and hope, hopefully that gets back. All right, good, mo good morning, everyone. So used to having this mask on. Um, so I'll also bring Kevin in uh, to join us. Katie is busy doing a tour. And as you've been seeing, we've been having uh, vaccinated uh, triad guests and visitors on campus. Many, many, many tours and quite a few triads as well. So thank you all for opening your homes and joining them folks for meals and just welcoming, welcoming them in the halls. Um, one tour on Saturday did lead to a reservation. So uh, last time I was here, I let you know that we still had the cottage next to the fitness center available and a cottage on Sunrise Ridge. That cottage near the fitness center is now reserved uh, for a July uh, move, uh, closing. So. The only one left is on Sunrise Ridge. So we're actively touring that. Uh, we do have an apartment that's gonna come open in a couple weeks uh, for a resident who moved to assisted living. So we're working on that as well. Um, but overall, you know, we're 97% oc occupied, uh, almost 99% if you include reserved um, independent living. And we you know, look at national statistics and across the country, um, folks, a lot of communities like ours dropped about six and eight percent, you know, so even communities that had been traditionally over 90 are down to 83 to 85 percent is the national average. So um, it's because of a wonderful marketing team, but also, you know what I say, a, a wonderful product. <laughs> and you guys are a product <laughs> that we sell all the time. So thank you so much. Um, so we expect uh, quite a few new residents moving in in June and July. So that'll be exciting. Uh, just a few things to let you know, we are still doing, even though we're having folks on campus, we're still doing virtual things as well. So the Katie and Kevin are still doing virtual tours and we're gonna have on May 13th, another Zoom uh, presentation about the history of Kendall and uh, Mary Cowling's gonna give a tour of Sunnyside. So that's gonna be really fun. Um, and then one way you all can help as usual um, in our marketing campaigns, we do use a lot of photos of all of you. And on Friday, I have a photographer coming here specifically to help in our um, staff recruitment campaign. Uh, so I've been working on that a bit. 
And what we want to do is showcase that this, you know, for me, what helps me, you know, want to wake up and go to work every day is that I work in a home. I work, get to work with all of you. Um, so I think there's a lot of people who would be attracted to that. You know, they, they think, oh, I don't want to work for a nursing home when they see Kendall at Lexington. But it's not that. It's working in this gorgeous grounds with, with wonderful residents. So we'll have a photographer here on Friday. And we're mostly trying to capture pic pictures of staff, but staff interacting with residents is what I really want. So if I show up and you're getting housekeeping or maintenance or IT help, and I say, can I take your picture? Be great if you said yes, it's okay if you say no. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just doing a lot of marketing and, uh, and a lot of tours. So I'll have Kevin come up and let you know a little bit more detail on that. Uh, Katie's actually doing a tour right now, so he'll cover what she usually covers as well. I forgot to stand in front of the camera. Floodgates have opened uh, in the past month, and uh, Katie is not here because she is indeed giving a tour right now. Since the last Residents Association meeting, Katie has given nine tours, and uh, she's had visitors from Willis, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, two from Georgia, two from New York. Uh, there's a triad visit happening right now with folks from Vermont. And then the rest of hers have been uh, local people. I've had five tours since our last meeting. Three Lexington, three of the tours were with various folks from Lexington, one from Franklin, North Carolina, one from Rockbridge Baths. And uh, we are now, I think we've mentioned scheduling uh, triads where the guests stay at Sunnyside House for a night or two. I actually have triads scheduled out right now, two of them so far for the month of June. So we're getting busier and busier and we love it. So thank you all for your cooperation in allowing us to show your homes and uh, being so friendly and kind to our visitors when you encounter them um, during their tours. And we've had one move in uh, since our last meeting. I think that's, uh, oh, I also uh, look to see how many contacts Katie and I have had by phone and email um, since the last Residents Association meeting, over 500. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we talk to lots of people every single day. That's it for marketing. Um, I, actually, I do wanna just mention one thing. Um, uh, because of the competitive market now with attracting staff, our uh, team has been uh, trying to use some of the skills we use in our sales, in our recruitment, in our marketing on the HR side. So uh, Desiree has created and who works in Megan's office, a Facebook page for uh, specifically to target staff. And then on our Facebook page, I've been running a lot of uh, different Facebook ads. And in just a month, we've had 50, over 50 people contact us through that. Now, nationally, they're looking at a 20 to one ratio of interviews, interviewing 20 people. So you probably have to get 100 people interested in you. But we're just you know, trying all different ways to uh, promote Kendall as a wonderful place to work, but also target people through Facebook, as many of the people who work here are on social media and are used to communicating through that rather than picking up a phone type of thing. Um, any questions of marketing? Elizabeth? Yes, what is the census in Webster and Borden? Um, I can answer that I just last um, saw yesterday, 13 residents of Webster and 36 residents of Borden. And um, we've also been trying to um, help on that end as well, run some advertisement, um, you know, now for many of you know, for many years, there's a, a waiting list, especially for Webster and, and for Borden. So we weren't really used to having to advertise that um, center, but people don't know, are, are you open? Are you taking people? So we're just making sure that the word is out. Any other questions? Okay, here's Diane. Thank you, Jessica, and we feel very fortunate to have such an effective marketing team here. Um, the other day I was walking by their offices and Katie's face 
was just as bright and happy as could be because she had a tour and Kevin had a tour. And I said, you're really happy now. She said, oh yeah. So that was good. One of the things that I think is really important is for all of us to be more informed about what goes on. And we have two new staff people uh, that are going to come up now. Judy's gonna come up first and tell about our new person um, that's added to the team in uh, dining. And after that, Karen Jackson is coming up and telling about some new staff and social workers. So first, Judy. Judy's coming up with our new employee. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Out there in Zoom land? All right, um, so dining is open. It's an exciting time of the year. Um, still a struggle with staffing, but uh, you guys have been very patient, so I appreciate that. Um, I think the food is phenomenal. Service is good, we're getting through, maybe not as pretty as it should be at times, but that's okay. And as we move forward, we're trying to do some reorganization in the dining department. So the first step is to bring on a registered dietitian, which I thought we needed from uh, for the board inside. His name is Stephen. He's going to step up in just a moment, so you can all see him. The Kendall people, the Kendall Hall folks, are all looking at him, waving. Um, he was brought on to make sure that we're meeting the dietary needs, both of the board and center and the independent living community. So the goal is, is to concentrate on board and throughout the rest of this year, and then perhaps start um, putting up schedules for him to speak to IL folks as needed. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna look, so, Bear with us as we get through the training process and as he takes over the reins for the board and center, please. Uh, his name is Stephen. He's from North Carolina, so be gentle with him. Um, are there any questions right now regarding dining? Yes. I can't see who that is. Hold on, let me put on my eyes. A. Bennell, yes. Ms. Smith, you're muted. You need to unmute. She's still muted. Anybody else? I'll get with you in the dining room, Ms. Smith. Anybody else out there in Zoom land that I can might be able to see? No. Okay, so Stephen, step up, grab the mic, smile pretty like. I don't like smiling. <laughs> Hello, everybody out in Zoom land um, and everyone here with us um, in Kendall Hall. Real close. Okay. Oh, there we go. I can hear myself now. Um, so, my name's Stephen, as uh, Judy said. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about being here uh, and working with uh, the board and residents, getting into Webster, um, kind of offering some support that they might not have had in the past, uh, as well as getting to know all of you guys um, in independent living uh, and be able to offer some services to you guys um, in the future. Uh, as Judy said, we don't know what that's really gonna look like, but I'm excited uh, to really be able to have a hand in developing those programs um, and offer you guys uh, things that, that you're gonna really benefit from, especially going along the continuum of care. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of talking to you guys when I get the opportunity, just to kind of get your ideas of what you wanna see, what you'd like to see from us. Um, because I mean, we're here for you. So that, that's kind of my goal is to, to implement things that you guys wanna see, not necessarily what I wanna do. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I went to uh, University of North Carolina Greensboro uh, for my undergraduate degree in North Carolina. Um, I also did my internship there. 
I was kind of born and raised there. Um, so I haven't done a whole lot of traveling outside of North Carolina. So this is my first real big step into something new. I know I, I decided to go a whole two hours away. I know it's crazy. Um, but I really love the mountains. I love the outdoors. The air up here is just so fresh. Uh, it, it's a very nice change from where I was at. Um, you know, I was explaining to everyone when they asked me about, you know, what drew me here. And I came up for uh, the tour uh, after the interview and just cresting the top of the entrance and just kind of being taken aback by the beauty of, of coming onto the campus. And, you know, the first thought in my head is I could get used to seeing that every day. Um, so I'm really, you know, I'm so far I'm loving it. The staff is great. Everyone I've met here has been really great, um, very welcoming. Um, so I'm really excited to, to get to know you guys better. I'm sure you guys want to know, I do not have any children. I am not married. I live currently in Roanoke. Um, I have an apartment downtown, so I commute about um, 55 minutes, but the drive's wonderful. It's beautiful. 81's not too bad for me. I know everyone else hates it, but it's kind of a refreshing drive for me because I'm used to a little bit heavier trafficked highways. So um, I'm really loving it and uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Glad you're here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, do you guys have any questions for me? Any things you want to know, interested about? Okay, well, let's keep it quick, yeah. That's a tricky one because as a dietitian, we know that I love kale. We may try to trick you with other greens instead. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to hand it back. Oh, we have another question. Yes, sir. I do have a last name. I was I was granted one of those at birth. Um, Vega is my last name. There's a silent I in there. I won't get mad if you forget. We good? All righty. Thank you. Welcome. Karen Jackson will be introducing two people with one name. Good morning, Kendall. So, uh, and everyone in the room, I'm, I'm, I'm like Jan, man, this is so good to see you guys. I mean, you have no idea how much we miss this interaction as staff. So um, yeah. that's why we're here. Um, so as you guys know, um, resident services, IT, health and wellness, the list goes on and on for Karen Jackson. Um, I lost Sybil a few months ago. Many of you remember Sybil Adams was kind of my right hand and really helped me out. Um, I'm blessed to say that someone you know from the community, Brittany Camden, now Smith, uh, has come to the other side. She's actually gonna be working with me in independent living and assisted living. Um, and I'm gonna give her a, a, an opportunity to talk a little bit about herself. Many of you will recognize her. So she just started Monday with me. So be patient, but we'll get her there. Um, you'll find that I'm asking her to make some calls and to, to do some things alongside of me so that she can start to, uh, to learn you as residents and um, kind of how we do things on this side of the house. The really great news is because Brittany has worked in the nursing center, she's been involved in assisted living. She's been on this campus 14, 14 years. Mm. Brittany is a huge resource for our residents, especially as they transition through the continuum or as you face challenges by trying to stay at home. So I'm really excited to have her here with us. Now, here's where the confusion comes, okay? So I am affectionately calling our Brittany Camden Smith, Britt, B-R-I-T-T. -T. And here's why. I want to welcome a new social worker named Brittany. <laughs> because I have stolen Britt to come to this side of the house, we have hired a new social worker for the Borden Center specifically, although I got a feeling these two gals will communicate uh, real often about things. Her name is Brittany with an I, Champagne. Did I say that right, Champagne? just like the bubbly, okay? <laughs> and so Brittany's been with us two and a half weeks, give or take. 
I'm going to let her talk a little bit about her background as well. But Brittany, no, Britt has been training Brittany on the job in Borden. So yeah, I know. I woke up this morning planning to confuse you, and I'm sorry about that. Diane, I apologize. But Britt and Brittany are both social workers, along with the KJ you know. We'll get it done for you. And uh, let me just give them a chance to introduce themselves. Stop by the office, you know where I am, near the mailboxes, if you have specific questions or uh, you just want to introduce yourself personally to Britt, we welcome you, okay? Hello, everyone. Um, as Karen said, I've been here quite a while. I started as a high school senior. Um, I was only supposed to be here a couple of weeks. I was hired by Felicia to help her get ready for a financial audit and a few weeks turned into 14 years. So I'm very blessed to still be here. Um, as I said, I've worked in finance. I helped with marketing some on the independent living side. Um, for some of you all that moved in during phase two, I was working at the reception desk. Um, but primarily my time has been spent in the board and center. Um, as their administrative assistant, marketing and admissions coordinator, and then as social worker. Um, so during that time, I graduated from Mary Baldwin in 2014 with my bachelor's in social work. Um, my husband, Ronnie, and I, we have two little ones. Quinlan is two and a half, and Hayes is five months. So they keep me busy when I'm not here, but... I'm definitely looking forward to getting to know folks um, on this side of Kendall, um, helping you all um, coordinate care um, for surgeries or just in-home um, services that you need. So um, bear with me as I'm learning things, but please stop by and introduce yourselves. Yes. Well, so um, I'm kind of in between places. My office currently is in the Borden Center, so I'm a little difficult, but I'm spending a lot of time in Karen Jackson's office right outside of the, the um, or right by the mailboxes. So um, I can be found there primarily. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to hand things over to Brittany with an I. <laughs> Stand. <laughs> I might have yeah, to stand. In there. <laughs> Can I stand here? I would say you're okay. They just they can't see. see. I'm a little short. Okay. Uh, should I stand? Okay. Right here. You can hear me now. Okay. Brittany with an I, last name Champagne, just like the drink, same spelling and everything. I have six girls, three of my own and three stepdaughters, four, two, eight, two, ten, and twelve. I'm very busy at home and here, but so far I'm making it. Yep. <laughs> I see some smiling faces over there in Zoom land. Very busy. Um, bachelor's in psychology. I've done mostly mental health for adults within the community. Um, I love kayaking, being outdoors. Really anything outdoors in Virginia has a lot of mountains to climb, trails, rivers, so that's been nice. Um, been here about two and a half, three weeks so far. Working in Borden, I haven't made my way this direction too much, but I would like to and I plan to. Um, my main goal here is just to meet everybody, make sure your needs are met in whatever way I can, and just to get to know you all. So, I think, and I'm originally from Louisiana. I'm not from here originally. Maybe some questions about that, but originally from Louisiana, but I love Virginia so far. So, any more questions or any questions you may have? Can't see me from the. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you. It's wonderful to meet 
our new staff people, and uh, you both have very engaging personalities. We welcome or look forward to getting to know you both, and good luck on your your new roles. Um. Uh, there we are. Okay. I'd like to give you now some announcements of just different things on the campus. Um, the board meeting, the Kendall board meeting is going to be May 20th. And at that board meeting, it's the annual meeting for the board. And at that time, Casey Brower and Bob Glidden, the president of our board chairman, um, are retiring after nine years of service. Um, there will be a reception that day afterwards, uh, probably out on the deck. Um, Pam Lucky is the president elect. Uh, and she and I have been conversing about um, the farewell for them or the, the thank you. Uh, so plan on that date. As we are doing our coming out of our long tunnel, we are having conversation again. It has been wonderful to see people on the deck. I, there's so many happy faces as people are coming uh, to that. And something that um, John South and I are going to revive is having pizza with a uh, conversation um, for a little while, maybe once a month, but from time to time. And if you want to have or join for pizza next week, next Tuesday, please sign up on the bus or the sign up bulletin board, which is just around the corner from all of the in-house mailboxes. Do check the front bulletin board. More things are happening now. More notices are going to go up. You can always check Katie. And of course, um, we have the nice uh, notes that come out to us from Becky. We're also this week starting Super Scooper Ice Cream Thursdays. We're short of staff, but we are going to be the staff for these. Judy very nicely has arranged for us to have some ice cream down in the dining room. We'll have it both at noon and at dinner and two people um, from each week from one of our committees will be there. So your committee convener will be asking um, people from your committee when we get the schedule ruling. This week, people from um, the c &E, Culture and Entertainment Committee will be hosting and next week we'll have the uh, residence council being the super scoopers. Our stepping out committee meets again tomorrow. And as I've been thinking about uh, the process, we're all happy to be in step seven. But I saw a cartoon uh, in the paper a couple days ago, and I thought that it really uh, reflects who we are and what we are right now. It was a person that was near the end of a tunnel and the bright light shining there. But this person in, the, in that had a lot of questions over his or her head. We know we've been in a tunnel, and our question is, are we out of a tunnel? Are we out of the tunnel? How much do we feel safe doing? How much do we feel safe doing together as a group? How about on a personal level? We've been in that tunnel for so long that it's, and we've had questions the whole time about what is safe? What do we do as individuals in terms of being safe? And it's hard to figure out just where we are along that tunnel and how to move forward because we can't sit in a shell forever. And we really do need to be thinking about moving forward. So I, th I hope that all of us find our pathway. I know I've struggled about, am I really gonna take that flight up to Minnesota this summer? Well, I am, but it's, it's taken a little bit of figuring, okay, we're, we're just gonna keep on trying to do that. And yesterday I was reminded of that because um, we participated in the VMI Memoirs Writing Project. And um, we've been doing that this term um, by way of Zoom. But yesterday we had a small gathering on the back courtyard in Sunnyside House. It was wonderful to be doing that. And that really reflects who we are as a Kendall community. We are active people. We do stimulating activities. And it's something that each one of us needs to step out to participate and, and live an active life. We've had to be quiet and in our chairs, but let's just gather a little confidence to take some steps forward and, and live our stimulating life here. 
Uh, Resident Council is doing an update along with staff of the Red Book, which I announce each month, but it is going to take a while to do that. Uh, Resident Council is going to be meeting shortly and looking at the bylaws for the Residents Association. And we'd welcome uh, input from people who might want to make suggestions uh, that can go to Bill Fulton or Margaret Fletcher or anyone on Resident Council. We are beginning uh, in May, our staff appreciation fund drive semi-annual, um, and that will take place during May. And what we'll do is have an outside ice cream social on June 10th. You have been wonderful at being supportive of our fine staff through all of this, and I know that you'll continue to do so. Um, when you'll be getting the letter uh, sometime in May, for that are pretty soon in May. Um, I think that's about all I have right now. And now I'm gonna ask for some committee reports and Joe Scovira is going to come up and talk about uh, one of our committees, which is the nominating committee. And after Joe is, um, when he talks about the nominating committee, it's the process that the nominating committee goes through each year for the resident associations resident council members. Um, after that, we're gonna have um, Anita James is going to talk about sustainability. And then we have a treat at the very end um, of having a little activity here. Thank you, Joanne. It's been a while since I've done this too, so I'm not sure I'm doing it right. So more, louder. People say I have a big mouth. How can I not be any louder? <laughs> well, uh, as uh, uh, as Diane said, I'm here to talk a little bit about the nominating committee procedures. Most of you know about how we get our officers each year, but there are probably a few new uh, residents who don't know. So I'll quickly go through the, the main points. The first thing we do is we have to, to uh, populate the nominating committee. So uh, I sort of have the job of being the convener for a while. And we had a committee from previous year with five people on it. Four of those people have agreed to serve again their second term. The fifth person is rotating off and uh, I've got a replacement for her as well. So the, uh, this team is ready. The next thing I do is go to the council and say, would you formally appoint this team? And uh, I'm sure they will do so. And then we need to determine what offices need to be filled. Three terms are going to expire. The president, uh, secretary and treasurer all have served their two year term by the end of the year. So two year term, excuse me. And um, they will need to be replaced. Uh, it'll be hard to replace them, but we'll do the best we can. Um, we may, I hope all of the current other members will stay on for another year. I haven't talked to them yet about that. Uh, we also solicit recommendations from residents as to who you think might be a good officer, whether it's for president or counselor at large or one of the other positions. So feel free as the time goes on, contact me or other members of the, of the uh, nominating committee and make a recommendation. We'd love to have it. Uh, we'll combine the resident recommendations along with the recommendations of the committee itself and we will come up with a draft slate. And we will ask these individuals if they're willing to serve, and hopefully they will. And once we have that uh, commitment, we will announce who these candidates are to all of you. And then in November at what we call our annual meeting, residence meeting, we will present this slate officially and ask for the approval of the residents. Notice I didn't say we asked for a vote. We don't do that here. But we do ask for a consensus of approval. And as far as I know, we've always gotten one. So I, I don't think we have to worry about that. We have a lot of good people, a lot of people who are very active and looking for another job sometimes is not the first thing on their list, but the council is a very important function here. And we look forward to staffing it with uh, very good people. Are there any questions about the nominating committee? And I guess I should look at the screen here to see. Joe, when will you start the, uh, the process more formal? Uh, Diane's question is, when will the process become more formal? Uh, right now, we're going to have a meeting of the five members of the committee in May.
just to talk about, to get oriented, what positions we have to fill, where do we go from here? In August, we will start in earnest uh, looking at candidates, going down the list of who is overworked that we could pile one more job on. Uh, you know what they say, you know, if you want to get somebody good, find a busy person, right? But we have some very busy people here and we'll try to get them to uh, join the fold for the council as well. Uh, other questions, comments? Okay, I, I think it's all up to uh, Anita. There you go, thank, thank you. you. Let me slip out of the way. Stay. I have a question. Can you hear me in the back of the room? Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So good morning. Uh, as the convener of the Sustainability Committee and in honor of Earth Week, we have a couple of things that we would like to make sure that you are aware of although there has been other publicity. Uh, three things for you. First, Earth Day. Earth Day is tomorrow. As was pointed out earlier, the landscape uh, architects are being interviewed tomorrow on Earth Day. Well, there are some other things going on. Some of you might have seen some uh, Burma Shave-like jingles uh, coming in from Kendall and then along uh, after the stop sign coming in. Uh, thanks go out to Joe Burrows and to uh, Susie Lynch uh, for their creative activities. I asked for help uh, at the Sustainability Committee to create uh, some jingles and they both stepped up and helped out. And there are more of them that will show up in connections over the next few months just to keep reminding us about the things that are important in terms of recycling and or care about our earth. Speaking of which, this afternoon, the potpourri at four o'clock is Kiss the Earth, and it looks at issues of sustainability, of growth, development, and care of this world. I'm going to steal a little bit from uh, I, I'm sorry, I said Joe Burrows. Uh, Ted, Joe Burrow, however, is a football player <laughs> who grew up in Athens, Ohio, where we were. Uh, Ted, I'm sorry, Ted, my apologies to you because I know you're out there. <laughs> He's clapping. Uh, one, of, one of Ted's jingles ends with, uh, there is no planet B. In other words, the world we live in is the only one we have, and we need to take care of it. So this afternoon, potpourri, four o'clock, here in Kendall Hall, we hope to see you. Uh, you are seeing out front a trailer with some plastics in it. Uh, that's thanks to Robin Potter and Herbie and his staff uh, collecting uh, what we recycle in a two-week period. And hopefully by the time that's all done, you will be appalled at how much we get rid of. And Rockbridge County and uh, Rockbridge Area Conservation are doing a uh, refuse, uh, what's the statement? Um, please to refuse plastics. And so to the extent that you can buy things in glass, which can be more easily recycled, please do so. Uh, but thanks to Robin Potter for setting that up. On Friday at 2.30, there is a webinar uh, that is shared by Kendall at Oberlin, looking at LED lighting and how to understand more about LEDs and which ones work best where, uh, an issue that many of us are, are looking at. Uh, second, uh, we're going to try to figure out, well, we're going to participate in a way for you to recycle more of your plastics. Right now, you can only recycle numbers one and two. Uh, there is a challenge offered by Trex, and that's the company from which we purchased all of the new chairs and benches and tables. And it is a challenge for recycling some dozen 
different kinds of plastic films. So those of you who get uh, Amazon Prime envelopes, the plastic envelopes, you can't recycle them now. During our challenge, you'll be able to. The thin plastic bags you put your veggies in at the grocery store, right now you can't easily recycle them. You'll be able to. Uh, Ziploc sandwich bags, also other brands, not just Ziploc. As long as they're clean, right now you can't recycle them. They go in the landfill. So we're going to be sharing more information about this challenge. And the challenge is gathering a certain number of pounds and you don't need to worry about that right now. But if we do it in a time frame that Trek specifies, guess what we get? Another bench. So more places for us to sit and rest and enjoy the beautiful environment. A third, two points of interest, just really quickly. One, for those of you who get newspapers in the morning, and they come in plastic bags and sometimes with a rubber band around them, you can do two things. One, if you keep those plastic bags, if you're not using them for your, for your dog, uh, but those plastic bags and those rubber bands can be returned to your carrier. Your carrier will take them and reuse them. If you don't want to do that, save the rubber bands. We can recycle the plastic bags under this new Trex challenge when we get started but save the rubber bands and sustainability is suggesting that we give them to administration so they don't have to buy as many rubber bands. <laughs> Jan's hand went up. <laughs> I'm sure the rubber band expenditure is huge, but. <laughs> right, and, and second, just a reminder, since this is planting season, that your plastic pots can be recycled at Lowe's or if you buy your plants up at Millmont in, in uh, Stewart's Draft, they will also take back your pots to recycle them because otherwise they go in the trash and landfill unless you have another alternative for them. Any questions? The, the question was, what do you do with your trimmings and leaves and other things from your garden? My, my understanding, at least up on the ridge, and if I'm wrong, correct me, since Herbie's not in here, is we just put them in a container out on the edge of the, the sidewalk and periodically uh, staff come by in their little carts and pick them up. There's a compost pile that's being developed down by where the old maintenance shed was, and, and Herbie's hoping to do something more formal eventually, but they're getting put down there to compost. But they would prefer you not, because it's, it's a little tricky down there, but, but they can be picked up. Other questions? I'm sure there are more than six people out there in Zoom land. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're going to transition to an activity. I'm going to let Anita and Ed get set up, and I'll turn the camera so you can see what they're doing. I want to mention a couple of things uh, that came up. I think it's really beneficial for committees to. Um, make announcements here at the meeting. We, we appreciate seeing it printed and uh, so on, but it helps to be an announcement here. Also, we're having a landscape architect submit proposals. These are more not what plants go at what place. It's more of a plan for land use. What are we gonna do in different parts of our campus? What a kind of a general arm waving. There will be a lot of involvement of the residents once one of the firms is chosen. So I wanna assure you, this is a process and um, not a written plan that they'll just submit. So you know that. Okay, Ed's here to tell you about a really fun activity. I do have to move this a little bit. Pardon? Oh, 
it really is a fun activity, uh, really to, for two reasons. One is it develops upper body strength because you're, because you're sitting in a chair, which is called chair volleyball, and you're moving your arms and you're moving around. So as those of you in TV land or computer land can't see Anita right now, but she's over there with a, with a volleyball. A volleyball is not the regular volleyball. It's a beach ball. It's very light, no harm. It'll hit you in the nose. It will hit you in the head. Ooh, there. So this is what it looks like. And it's very light. And there are two reasons to do it. One, as I said, develops upper body strength. But the second reason, and the really important reason, it's fun. I have heard more laughs at each of our chair volleyball games than in any other single activity here at Kendall. So we invite you to come down this afternoon at 2.30 for a game. If you don't want to play, just come on to take a look and see what it's like. Uh, one of the rules, there are really only about three rules. One is you have to stay seated in the chair. It is called the one cheek rule. That is, you could lift one cheek off the chair, but you have to keep one cheek on the chair. So unfortunately, and maybe she can turn the around. Okay, she's going to take a quick video because we're going to do a quick demonstration. Now you have to imagine there's about a five foot net in front of each of us. Can uh, folks on Zoom see? There's a little bit of there's a little bit of feedback. Yeah, can you not do it on the microphone? Okay. All right. What they're doing is that they sit it and get it in. Uh oh. Good cheeks. Hey, Peter. And you can hit it as many times as you want before you get it over. We have some people that are participating who are on walkers. <laughs> yeah. He giggles so hard um, and laugh because the ball sometimes goes up and hits the fan and twirls around and goes all <laughs> over. I think part of the exercise is getting up and retrieving the ball. <laughs> <laughs> It's a cool uh, rainbow ball, too. <laughs> you might you might say there are three to five, well, three to six people on each side. That's true. So it's not a one on one. Yeah, <laughs> so you have some more help. <laughs> Good. So you're not you're on me. Yeah. So we thank you. Uh, and let's. We have three or six on. Um, it, it works best with six on a side. So far, we've only gotten as far as five on a side. But we hope to get more people coming. It will be every every week, every Wednesday at two thirty. Um, if there are any questions here, Norm. Norm. Will they get ice cream and wet chair and board and chairs? No, we will just have it in the main dining room. So come down if you want to have some ice cream, Norm. The, the, oh, the answer is we are not doing it in Borden, and I don't think that we can have our residents. I, I think logistically, it's difficult to also provide going over to Webster at this time, but you can let Judy know you'd like to have ice cream there. Um, we're just planning on doing it in the main dining room, uh, both at noon and in the evening, um, and we'll or, or, with dinner too. Any other questions here? And you have special events over there where they serve ice cream too, so you can get it um, there. 
With that, I'm going to say that we are adjourned for April. I thank everyone for participating. I look forward to even more people, residents coming here to Kendall Hall next month. Thanks so much. And thanks to Jessica and her team for participating. No, we could, we can um, maybe let.